<laughs> that hurt. <laughs> I'm tuned in like crazy, and I'm I'm pretending like I know what they're doing, and I'm you know the articulate and intelligent. Greg's a bitch. That's all. I find them uh, offensive as hell. I've never been a fan. Yeah, fuck that. Ooh, terrible. Bad. Not bad. Oh, pretty good. Okay. Decent. Fair. Great. I loved it. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah, you really gotta wonder how this stuff now gets made. <laughs> Welcome to the straight red card. Here I am. All by myself, Brett is on vacation in Jamaica, so I'm going to cover the game a little by myself. Um, we'll be back next week, full time, Monday and Thursday at 8.15 like normal, 8.15 p.m. So just join us then. But uh, let's get into this game. The United States uh, walks away from the Nations League as champions. They win 2-0. Uh, they essentially played better than they ever really played as a group these past two games. They've been fabulous. Um, they really had their shit together. They looked loose, creative. And I'm going to have to give some credit to BJ for that. Um, and also the fact that he put out a fantastic uh, starting 11 uh, versus Mexico. And his changes were really good and smart and thoughtful. Um, I would say the same thing um, against Canada. Very thoughtful, uh, especially in regards to the fact that you're missing McKenney. Uh, you were missing Miles and Dest. And you had to replace those guys. And um, I think the guys that came in and did the replacing did a, a solid job. Um, if you're Zimmerman, I think Chris Richards was unbelievably great. Um, also, keep in mind, this last two games have showed us something here. And that is, with no Tyler Adams, we can still have an amazingly effective midfield. Especially that pairing of Musa, McKenney, and Reyna. Now... I know we've always talked about the MA, MMA midfield. It's almost irreplaceable. But I guess depending on who you play and if you want more offensive and creative output, you can't keep Gio Reyna off the field, off the pitch. He's got to be on there. Now, sadly, of course, he got injured um, and didn't get to play the second half. But that first half by Gio Reyna was everything as special as you would have ever hoped for from that kid. And all those idiots out there who said that Gio Reyna should never be a part of the U.S. men's national team set up again. Yeah, let's punish Gio Reyna for what his parents did. And we've said it multiple times here. Gio Reyna could have acted better. He should have acted better. He's a kid, though. And he was an immature kid during the World Cup. And I understand his frustration. Because since Greg has left, when Reyna is on the roster, he plays. He starts. He starts for BJ. And he's starting in the midfield. And he's kind of given free, ro free roam at times to do what he needs to do to be where he needs to be. But he's also shown... He can maintain a defensive posture when necessary. He can play defense. He can give you and take responsibility for the defensive end of the field. It's not a big deal. It can be done. And he did it. Um, so it does raise that question again. If you really want to have that creative spark out of the midfield, can you really afford to leave Reyna out of the equation? Isn't a Reyna, Musa, McKenney lineup maybe the best lineup you can have? 
No offense to Adams. I suppose if you're playing an extremely elite team and you need to break up the defense, or, or you need to break up their offense and cause havoc and chaos, then Adams is your guy because he is a destroyer. Adams is a destroyer, a seek and destroyer. But what else does Adams bring? Leadership, maybe. But that doesn't seem to be missing on this team. We seem to have enough leadership on this team, especially if Tim Reams back, or because um, Polisic is sort of the quiet leader. But you saw footage of him in the locker room. He's a verbal leader too now. He's not that just the shy kid anymore. He's stepping up. He's sort of been forced into being an extrovert, and um, he's growing as a person. One thing I will say is. I hope Greg closely watched, and we know he did, the last two games under B.J. Callahan. And I hope he watched the other games, too, under Hudson. When Hudson said, listen, we're moving forward. We're going to start, you know, giving some freedom to these kids. We're going to allow them to be more creative. Pepe said it. The difference between Hudson and, um, and Greg was freedom to be creative to find the lanes. He wasn't dogmatically told, when the ball's here, you have to be here. When the ball's here, you need to be here. No, Pepe felt like he had the freedom to go out there and find the ball or to find the lanes. That's what we need from a coach. We don't need dogma, Greg. We don't need dogma. We don't need constipation. We, I don't ever want to see this group of players Go out on the pitch and play constipated ever again. And if you take the reins back and I see that again, I'm calling that crap out. And I think there are a lot of people out there who think there's sort of some fucking personal vendetta against Greg Berhalter. There isn't. I wasn't happy that he had to live through what he had to live through when the Reinas did what they did. Gio's parents. That was unnecessary, and I felt bad that that all had to come out. And he had to re and his wife had to relive something that they had passed and got gotten past years ago. It was unnecessary. It was a low blow and a cheap blow. There are things I don't like about Greg. I'd have a beer with him, but there are things I don't like about Greg. I think he's too tricky. He thinks he's tricky and smart. He thinks he can he can deceive and people won't notice. But that's sort of this inauthenticity that's sort of ingrained in him. He's still not 100% comfortable with being himself, whoever himself is. I think maybe he's still trying to find himself. Because people who are comfortable with themselves don't need to lie about player injuries, about players they don't want on the team. Make up stories about why Brooks isn't here. Listen, if Brooks is what you would consider a locker room cancer because he doesn't meld with the culture of the team, just fucking say it and get it over with. How hard is that? Just say it. Don't say, oh, he's not playing good enough. Or, oh, no, we want to give him time with his team, Hoffenheim coming into this next season. Brooks, if you ask him if he wanted to make that decision, ask him, his club, and him if he wants that. Because I guarantee you, Matarazzo will let him go play the Gold Cup. All right? And John Brooks would love to go play the Gold Cup and represent his country. If he's such a problem, how come he's been so good about keeping his mouth shut and not ruining his chance by saying something like... He hasn't even come close to saying what Joe Scalia said about Greg Berhalter and Greg Berhalter's system. Not even close. And yet, he's blackballed. Now, we know he was upset when he was yanked at halftime during the Honduras game. And yeah, we heard about the rumors and uh, what happened in the locker room and shit was thrown and he was really upset and pissed off and he punched a locker or whatever he did. Threw a shoe... All right, there was some kerfuffle that happened there. Um, and we know he didn't always see eye to eye with Greg. But 
Neither did Matt Miazga. And he still made the Gold Cup. As for this game, um, Balogun has proven he's going to be an important piece going forward. Balogun, in many ways, has just taken Josh Sargent's job. Because he brings you everything Josh Sargent can do. And he's faster. Maybe he doesn't give you the air game. But he's really good in the box. He's really good at being in the right place at the right time. And if Josh Sargent isn't careful, he may be out of the picture altogether. Because we usually only bring and use two strikers. So you got Pepe. And I don't expect Pecky, Pepe to go away and lose form in any way next season. No matter if he ends up at Augsburg. He'll play. They need goals. And they know it too. That's why it's taking so long for a deal to get done. People keep saying, well, he's leaving. There is no guarantee he's leaving. If he does leave and he goes off to Holland, I'm fine with it. But it's not a guarantee that that's going to happen. Augsburg would be stupid to make it easy for him to leave. Because one thing Augsburg couldn't do last year, when they once again were fighting against you know relegation all season, was score goals. That's what Pepe does. And I think Pepe would be testing himself much more uh, rigorously in the Bundesliga than he would in Holland. Let's be honest. Holland's nice, but there was this guy named Josie Aldador that scored a bunch of load of goals in Holland. Ended up at Sunderland was a complete flop. So being the lead scorer in Holland is not a guarantee of anything. It's just not. We've seen it time and time again. Top scorer and one of the top scorers in Holland goes to England. Flops. <clears throat> All right. I'm not going to go through this player by player, but I am going to say that Joe Scally showed that if Serginho Dest, for whatever reason, can't play, we're just fine with Joe Scally. I'm not sure about the hairdo. I think Randall looked a lot better with it. The do than Scally's wasn't so, it wasn't happening for me. But a good player, a solid player, was there when we needed it. How many times did Jedi bail us out on the back post? And even right up there in the box. Jedi was so self-conscious, so self-aware, excuse me, yesterday of what was going on in front of him. He was always at the right time. Right place. Right time. Um, Richards was absolutely splendid. If that kid can stay healthy, um, he's going places. I don't know if he needs a loan or whatever um, from Crystal Palace, but he should be playing on a day-to-day -day basis. He's that good. Zimmerman came in and did what he does. Um, Aronson is a replacement for McKenney. Doesn't bring you all the dimensions that Kenny, McKenney can. Like... Um, He's a runner. He'll give you lots of energy. He'll step up and play some defense. He made Davies life a living hell, along with Scally, the beginning of the game last last night. Musa is splendid. He, in many ways, he's not a destroyer, but he does enough defensively that he can play that role that Adams plays for us but then deliver so much more on offense. Deliver so much more as far as creativity goes. He's not going to give you goals in front of the box anyhow. So he should be playing that position. The CDM spot that uh, Adams would usually anchor. And I think we're going to see a battle going forward. Adams versus Musa. Because I want my other two midfielders to be more creative thinking. I.e. McKenney. I.e. Brainer. I think it's Adams who could be losing his starting role here. Up top, Pulisic was quiet for the most part. But I think he was okay with 
it being him being quiet. I think that um, he didn't need to be the star of the show. And I think he's realized that now. There are so many good players on this team. He does not need to be superhero. He just needs to do his job. Lastly, Weah is... I cannot believe there is not a team in France or somewhere else who doesn't want this guy to play right wing for their team somewhere. Not right wing back. Not right back. Not left back. Right forward. Right winger. I mean, the guy is fast as shit. And we dominated that side of the pitch the whole game. Yes, Canada have more possession. I'm okay with that. Possession doesn't mean dick. How many times have I said that? We watched the Greg games. Greg comes out after we lose to Canada. Well, we were dominant. Well, so what? You had more possession. But you couldn't do anything with it. Nor could Canada last night. Nothing. Right now, the United States is leaps and bounds better. Talent-wise, technically, and even managerial-wise. Um than Mexico and Canada. They're just both a step down below us. A full step. Mexico might be a step and a half below us. Um, and that really is a testament to how this game has grown in this country. Despite promotion and relegation not existing. Despite having pay to play. We've seen that slowly evolve out of that. At least with the MLS academies. No more pay to play. We're not as much, right? And we're seeing it now. This new generation. And this new generation of players going over to Europe. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But right now, it looks really good. I mean, if you ask me, we should be just as good as, say, the Dutch national team at this point. Somewhere around there. I know we're still young. And I know the Dutch national team is a little bit more mature, has some older players. We really don't have a whole lot of old players, especially if Tim Ream's gone. The other thing is, I think there are certain players that are done with this team. Roll on. You're done. Aaron Long, you're done. We have depth now. We, we don't need those kind of players anymore. The depth is at a point that you have to earn it to be on this team. Nothing against MLS, but Roldan, Long, Johnson, Shaq Moore, Yedlin, Jesus Ferreira even. I'm sorry. We don't need them. We've got the depth. Jesus Ferreira, go play overseas somewhere and prove it to me. Because scoring in the MLS right now doesn't seem to be very meaningful. Brandon Vasquez scored a, a fucking boatload of goals last season. It's just not meaningful. Why? It's not a gigantic test. The the thing that is the, the worst part of MLS is defense. Players go out and spend money on midfielders and offensive players in MLS because there's a cap. That's where they put their money. They prioritize their money. They do not prioritize their money on defense. They don't go out and buy the best defenders in the world or the best defender in South America or the best defender here or there that they can find. Defense is not a priority in MLS. So scoring goals in MLS is just not seemingly, does not translate to the international game. It just hasn't. Because Jesus Ferreira can only score against minnows in CONCACAF. And up until recently, Pepe had that problem too. But his goal versus Mexico was something of beauty. All right. That's all I've got for you today. I know 20 minutes of a show isn't going to replace the usual two hours of madness that we put in. But until the next time, on the straight red card... We'll see you soon. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm tuned in like crazy and I'm, I'm pretending like I know what they're doing and I'm, you know, the articulate and intelligent. Greg's a bitch. That's all. I find them uh, offensive as hell. I've never been a fan. Yeah, fuck that one. Ooh, terrible! Bad! Not bad! Oh, pretty good. Okay! Decent! Fair! Great! I loved it! <laughs> this sucks. Yeah, you really gotta wonder how this stuff now gets made. <laughs>